Welcome back to the newest series here on the channel where I plan to show that anyone can invest. If this is the first time you're hearing of this series and you want to know what it's all about, make sure you click on the link that's going to pop up above my head to get a full understanding of what I'm trying to accomplish with this portfolio. That first episode is going to explain things like why I picked the stocks I picked, how much I'm going to be investing, and the goals of this portfolio. What have you got to lose? Once you're caught up there, feel free to watch the rest of the episodes in order to see the natural progression of this portfolio or just come back to this one to see where I'm currently at. With that being said, if you're already caught up and you're here for your bi-weekly update, let's get to it. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you all an updated look at the portfolio since the last video, the all-time best and worst performers in the portfolio, any dividends received since the last update, and any news or things of note about this portfolio. Now, without further delay, let's get an update on where this portfolio sits after my most recent set of buys completed on April 9th, 2024. Here you can see all 12 of the stocks that make up the Anyone Can Invest portfolio and how much of each of them I own. With this being episode number seven, my objective is to get all of these positions as close to the $35 mark as I can, knowing that for some reason beyond my understanding, my full purchase amount never gets added as I instruct it to, but that's okay. No, it's not okay. With the $60 added today, I had a total of $63.01 to help me do just that. I calculated what was going to be needed to get each of these holdings to the $35 goal, and that's what I added this week. Again, it's important to note that while the amounts of money I talk about in this series are small for now, the important takeaway is that anyone can invest, even if you don't have a lot of money. Beginning anything is always a slow process, but sticking with it is the only way you'll ever get to see the results. As this portfolio continues to grow with capital appreciation, the dividends keep coming in and more and more money is added, you'll be able to see the growth of this portfolio over time, so make sure you're subscribed. Okay, next, let's see which stocks are the best and worst performers in the first 12 weeks. If you've been following along, you know that each week I add my $60 to this account and then buy my holdings no matter their cost or valuation. This feeds off the idea that I don't think stock price matters as much as some would have you believe, especially for those that have a longer timeline before the money is needed. With that being said, and despite a really rough week for some of these positions, I'm still in the green of nine of my 12 positions after the first three months of this account's existence, all while buying the companies I want regardless of their valuation. Taking this information from the close of market on April 9th, I now have a new top dog, which is STLD, that's up nearly 14%, while my biggest loser remains HUM that is now down almost 12%. Overall, this portfolio in the first 12 weeks is up 3.48% or $14.51, which would be a 15.08% annualized return. Next, I want to take a second to go over the dividends received in this account since my last update. Now that the ball is finally rolling, I will always have a dividend or two to share with you in every video, and that's one of the many beauties of this portfolio and how I constructed it. Not only did I want to put together a portfolio of high quality, dividend growth, capital appreciation machines to help people understand that anyone can invest, but I also wanted to attack the idea that we need to wait so long to get paid when we first start out. Since the last episode was recorded on March 26th and posted on March 28th, I had a few sources of income trickle into this account, beginning with three cents on March 28th from SPAXX as the interest on the little bit of cash sitting in the account. Then on April Fool's, I received my first dividend from ABGO for a record shattering 11 cents. And then the following day on April 2nd, I got another five cents, this time from PHM. All of this brings my total passive income for March up to 10 cents, the quarter one passive income total up to 18 cents, and so far here in April, we're already at 16 cents with a few more dividends still yet to come. For those of you who will also watch my other content, such as my monthly recaps, you're very familiar with this chart. And for those of you who are just here for this series, this chart will do a great job of showing the progress of the passive income in this account over time, which is yet another reason to make sure you're subscribed and come back every other Wednesday to check on its progress. The last thing I like to do before wrapping up this video is check out the dividends I should be getting between now and the next video update in two weeks. Between now and the next update to this portfolio during the week of April 22nd, I'll be getting two more dividends. Later this week, I'm expecting my first income from the best performer in the portfolio, STLD. And then the following Thursday on April 18th, passive income from Intuit will be hitting the account. Again, the ball in this account is now rolling and it'll be fun to come back bi-weekly and check on the progress of this account. So make sure you're subscribed and don't miss an upload. If you find this video or the idea behind this series inspiring, please help me pass that flame along to somebody else in your life that needs it and show that anyone can invest. And if you have any thoughts, comments, or questions, leave those in the comment section down below as I personally read and respond to every one of them. And if you happen to be skeptical on just how pennies today can help pay your bills years from now, make sure you check out this video. But until next time, see you.